gets a little discouraging, you know? You move into a new neighborhood, ready for a new start, with shards of glass broken in your forced march, stuck among others, already in your heart, angry dismantling, all boxed up, loud, among memories. You are looking for peace. You unpack the boxes. No, you don't. You unpack two bottles of Chuck and relax into the new view, the unfettered you. Time to breathe, put the past in the past. It's a pastoral change of scene. And it's quiet in the parkland, except when the city guys with a mowing machine meant to take down cornrows mow the grass for the parade of leash dogs who pee the whole thing into an interesting yellow. And it all should be great, just great. There are castles in the sky. Justin Bieber lives nearby. <laughs> Some neighbors even have pet deer. It's a kind of place where you can go to the butcher and get your body sculpted virtually for free. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Choice cuts. Brew pubs abound. So, of course, some guy walks into your home carrying a plastic cup. You start directing him to a bar. Only he says, hey, I need someone to piss in a cup for my drug test tomorrow. <laughs> you send him to the bar for a hoppy urine-filled sample. Specialty of the house. Your friends now call your home, peace in a cup. You were hoping for just peace. So you open a box. Faded wedding pictures. Toss it to the curb. Open another box, the 10K lawyer's bill, shredder. A third box brings the picture of you, stupidly, unknowingly, bouncing his mistress's baby. You can't breathe. What next, sweet Jesus, what next? You are turning inside out. And so the living ends and the watching begins. No, you haven't been alive for years. You notice guys on others' bikes trolling for treasures. And within a month, your flowers are stolen off the stoop. And you notice old guys walking stiff to find others more limber than themselves. They disappear in the low trees for shaded rendezvous. And then the chairs are stolen from your yard. And even the decorative stones are taken from the parkway exposing plain dirt. Then your parents come to see the new place, stepping over a cracked sidewalk. They ask about the party you had last night. And you think of your cat, and you think, party? What party? Then you see your mother stepping over little bits of a Trojan that never was a horse. <laughs> oh, party for hire. Then the paper is full of a description of the dead girl discovered on the golf course naked. You check, you check, you check the lock on your door, and now you know for sure it's the city. Fuck, it's the city. The season shifts into early nightfall, and cars drive slowly along the park. They stop, then go, go real fast as the person in the park recedes into the darkness. All you see is the tiny glow of a cigarette fading right before another stop-and-go pickup of something. The guys who dope the planets start parking in front of your house, their windows tinted darker than everyone else's, and you think, fuck, it's the city. And you get jealous of all your neighbors who live not two blocks away and enjoy their lovely porches and unpacked homes, the kind of places where you could bounce a baby. All you have are 59 boxes of flashbacks and rubble. You'll never have that baby. Unrequited anger returns. Are you losing your shit? Will it join your heart? 
The idea comes as you watch the drive-by crowd during commercial breaks from the History Channel showing World War II propaganda campaigns. You think, hmm, if it worked there, it could work here. It worked on you. Let's wait until this. Let's wait until that. Let's wait until the other thing. It works in war, and this is war. You're fighting for peace. You contemplate the propaganda. What will move the people? Not their hearts, but their asses. What will get them to stop parking and dealing, driving and doping, walking and fucking the too young, too diseased, too crazed? What can you write that will get them to stop and go away? Just leave the pretty park to the babies who deserve to believe the world is kind and safe before they have to experience all the dirt. What can you write that is persuasive and real and insane. And then it comes to you. It's not about what you can write, but what you can do. You can be a do-gooder, a do-better. You can be a do-er. You can be a neighborhood watch captain. So be a self-appointed military-style vigilante guard of the park and the street and the kids and the spirit of the dead girl. So you write a short note with tremendous compassion and great authority. You represent a committee of one. You write, dear neighbor, and you smile, remembering the doper and the dealer and the love deprived depraved were all somebody's neighbors once. You write, dear neighbor, we wanted to let you know our vice and narcotic squad has requested your cooperation in parking your cars in your driveway rather than on the street at night. They have been monitoring illegal nighttime activity in the park, collecting license plate numbers for quite some time. They now hope to remove from their lists those license plate numbers belonging to neighbors. <laughs> Please park your car in your driveway for the next several weeks while this important surveillance continues. If you have questions, bring them to our next meeting where we will review the number of successful arrests to date. Most sincerely yours. Your heart is racing. This note seems authoritarian. And you have never been that, ever. <laughs> this note has some teeth. It could even sound a bit threatening, but in a very conciliatory way. It sounds like things are proceeding in an orderly fashion when nothing is proceeding at all except for thefts of lives and homes in a one sweet neighborhood where people got to know their neighbor and walked home even at night without ending up dead. So you get into your dark clothes. You put on a dark cap. You carry your handwritten card signed, Neighborhood Watch Captain, lest the readers miss the faux authority. <laughs> First, you find the cars with the two darkly tinted windows and leave notes there. You find the abandoned, nondescript sedans with a little too much wear and make them more notable. You put the notes on the cars of the overnight people who just disappear into the dark to return just at sunrise. And then you repeat the whole 10-minute walk three times over the course of one month. You leave the notes with their most sincerely ending right side up on the windshields. You have lost your shit. But in the first week, the overnight hungover Parker disappears. Then you see the dark tinted windows move down a street. So you put the notes on them down there. <laughs> they too disappear. And then you realize the parade of drive slows, stop and goes, ends. The ones who look for love still come, but less. Everything quiets down. You quiet down. The thefts continue. But the park returns. You return. You resign from your watch captain group of one. <laughs> you return, most importantly, to the present. You unpack slowly and leave the boxes under the swagger of a Craigslist ad. They also disappear fast. You can pack it out. You can pack what you don't want right out of your life. You find peace in the disappearance of the bastards. You stop patrolling for the babies. Boxes are exchanged for places you can breathe because this is the city. You're fucking right. This is the city.
Julia Mixon.